and welcome once again. In this video, we are going to learn about RIF OS as layer three of the internet of value. So what is RIF and why was it created? Running as a third layer on top of the already existing two layer model, where Bitcoin provides the decentralized and secure store of value, and RSK allows for the execution of smart contracts and expands on Bitcoin scalability. Now, RIF on top of Bitcoin and the RSK infrastructure creates the remaining building blocks to a fully decentralized internet, decentralized storage, micropayments, communications, gateways, and marketplaces. In the previous decades, the appearance of the internet flipped the whole world upside down. It revolutionized how we perceive, acquire, and exchange information in a massive, instant and gratuitous manner, which led to a condition of better equality in our societies, where a lot of knowledge that was locked behind certain privileges are nowadays just openly available for anyone. But this internet of information is not all roses. It is founded upon a paradigm of centralization of control, where this flow of information is managed by only a few entities and at the expense of the end user's privacy. For example, your information, your identity, what you buy, and who you talk to. And while it has changed the way the world communicates and perceives information, it hasn't done much for the exchange of value. In the internet of information, monetary exchange is still controlled by centralized authorities. Decentralized blockchain technologies like Bitcoin have proven to handle the transfer of monetary value, but there is a need for a more global, broader decentralized ecosystem. Not just a means to send and receive money, but a fully decentralized internet where users are not just owners of their own digital money, but their digital identity too. A truly neutral, decentralized, and global internet where you control your own data or communicate with little need of centralized monopolies. RIF is founded upon this ideal and is a key piece to this mechanism. Through its services, RIF provides an infrastructure to facilitate the mass adoption of decentralized blockchain technologies, helping developers with the complexities of decentralization and improving the end user's quality of life. In other words, RIF aims to generate decentralized sharing economies, which are transparent and open platforms where individuals interact in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion to exchange information, money, and storage. So in contrast to traditional sharing economies, which are led by big tech companies that abuse their users' personal information, decentralization is RIF's way of establishing a safe ecosystem where individual rights and privacy are protected. This is the internet we envision. Now, like I mentioned before, RIF is at its core, a set of services made to facilitate the implementation of a decentralized internet. So to know what it really is, we need to know what each of these services are all about. First of all, and most importantly, there is the RIF token, which is deployed on the RSK blockchain. The RIF token will allow its holders to consume any of the services that are compatible with the RIF architecture. Now, these may not just be limited to the core RIF OS services, they may also be services developed by third parties that accept RIF tokens for their consumption. The idea is for the RIF token to serve as a common consumption token across all existing services, which facilitates interoperability and the ease of implementation. Now let's analyze each RIF service. There's the RIF name service, which is what will allow us to give blockchain addresses a human readable name or alias. To explain it with an analogy, it can be compared to a known parallel, DNS. Every time we try to reach a website or server through our browsers, we don't really type in the IP address, but instead we access through an alias like www.google.com. And this has become the norm for many years since it improves readability and reduces the probability of errors. RNS implements the same concept, but for decentralized blockchain addresses instead. It can operate with addresses for many different blockchains, so you can have a domain registered for any address you want outside of the RSK blockchain. RNS is comprised of two main elements, 
the RNS registry, which is the contract that keeps track of all the domains and their associated owners, and the RNS resolvers, which are the contracts that function as a middleman between the registry and the user. They resolve an alias to a specific address. To acquire the ownership of a domain name for a certain price in RIF tokens, users can register it in the RNS manager for a determined time span. Once a user is the owner of that domain, they can also transfer or sell its ownership to other people in secondary markets. This is the first move towards the ease of use that is much needed for global adoption. Now let's talk about payments. The way RIF will handle transactions is through the RIF payments service. This module implements an abstraction layer above different off-chain payment networks like Lightning or Raiden. This allows users to participate in cross-network transactions and enables fast and cheap peer-to-peer -peer transactions with a much higher transaction rate than on-chain methods. The first implementation of this concept is the Lumino network, the first off-chain state channel network on the RSK blockchain. With it, users can make fast payments with any RSK deployed token. RIF payments could provide the means to achieve enough scalability for mass adoption. Now the third service is RIF storage, which in partnership with Swarm provides users and developers a decentralized alternative to cloud storage through permissionless and censorship resistant protocols. To explain how it works, we can again compare it to its centralized counterpart. Normally, when you access a file or a website on the internet, you contact a centralized server, which then retrieves this information and hands it to you. With RIF storage, there is no server, but there's a group of collaborating nodes where each of them stores a fragmented piece of this information, which is pulled back together and retrieved to you on request. This means there is no central authority in control of that data, which makes it conceptually censorship resistant. RAF storage or similar services can be the backbone of this new decentralized internet by providing a way to implement decentralized websites, which in turn can be portals to any decentralized application from games to decentralized financial solutions. Now what about the marketplace? It is through the RIF marketplace where users can make use of most of these services. As a standalone service, the RIF marketplace will be the interface between service providers and consumers, allowing providers to advertise their service and facilitating the users to consume them. This acts as a medium where the idea of decentralized sharing economies really starts to flourish and economical activity can take place. And this is where the users will be able to, for example, engage in storage contracts with storage providers or buy and sell RNS domains. As of today, there are two services that are still in development and remain to be implemented. One is RAF Communications, which allows parties in a peer-to-peer -peer network to establish a secure communication channel with full anonymity, confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. The other one is RIF Gateways, which provides easy to use tools and technologies that allow developers to build applications that interact with the external world and is structured in three main components. One, data services to manage information coming from the outside world into the blockchain. Two, triggers to deal with the information flowing from the blockchain into external applications and three schedulers to run time-based logic and recurrent transactions on the blockchain. My name is Leah. Thank you so much for joining us and watching this video.